Hello everyone, this is going to be a very quick one showing you how the new SketchUp 8 works to not only bring in topography, but also then to do profiles. So this came up a number of classes. Obviously in civil engineering you need better information. Typically they're going to be pull off of a, a, a 90 meter digital elevation model, DEM. And we'll look at what is the metadata on that in Google Earth and Google um, Maps. but here is the tool. You start in a project. It will typically be in a meters project, I believe. I don't know if you can change that. We'll click here. You add a location. Right here, I've zoomed in to the Besset property. And I'm going to zoom out just slightly more to see if I can get the whole section in. So basically, you know that there's the that's the quarter mile there. All right, so I mean, it's the half a section there. So I'm going to go ahead and select my region. It goes out and grabs it. You do the grab. It brings it into your map. Now what you'll see immediately, it brings in two different pictures, both of them color that used to not be color. This is an improvement to SketchUp 8. But now if you go to Windows Layers, you'll see that you have two pictures. One is the terrain picture and one is the flat picture. The flat picture is the one you're really going to draft on top of a lot but underneath you've got basically some terrain there. Once you have terrain what you're going to do like in all SketchUp drawings you're going to always want to have a little box there off on the side so you can grab a plane. What you're now going to be doing to get your cross sections across here you probably want to go if you're smart go to window layers and make a new layer cross sec and make it current. And now what you're going to do is you're just going to cut a section by using the section tool. You're going to again move it to that face and hold a shift to hold the plane. You have to keep holding the shift key. SketchUp like AutoCAD is a two-hand adventure. I'm going to go grab right to that entry point. And I get my sketch there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click then on I'm selecting, having a hard time doing it. I'm going to select that, select that section plane. I'm going to hit right click and create a group from a slice. That is one cross section there. What I'm just going to do is I'm going to make some that are 30 meters either side. That's about a station. You see, I'm going to go here. I'm typing 30 on the right side, 30 meter. And now I'm going to once again do right click, active group from slice. Once again, I'll go ahead, click that using the move tool, 30 meters. Once again, right click, create group from slice. And that way you can slice all the way through if you want to get this idea of sectioning. You can then, again, what I did, what I would have then hopefully started right at the insertion point of the model. That information is then stored in the model info in the geolocation. It shows exactly to the hundredth of a second the location and later you're going to see there's some great tools in Ruby to get you exact UTM from lat long location. So that's incredibly great tools. You see it's also sectioning off on the right side there. Now if I go back to my window here I can even get rid of this. I'm going to ready click erase it. But we've got, you can see our profiles through there. Go back to window. Go back to your layers. Layers were important in AutoCAD. They're important here as well. You then have, in effect, your profile information. And you can, it is grouped, so each of those things you can then right click. If you each grab of those, right click and explode it. Uh, we might not want to do that. Right click, explode. Right click, explode. Right click, explode. Right click, explode. And right click, explode. Once again, SketchUp does some interesting stuff when you get a lot of information. Right now, though, you do have information, and later on, you can. I move some coordinates around and change your coordinate system, but you have something that you can actually pull elevation 
and this stuff then is tied off of off of a datum that was tied to that spot so even though it's listing an elevation if you got the original elevation from that spot everything is relative so obviously we're out in Belmont we're not going to have that elevation but let's go ahead and see if we can get a comparison elevation to a point right here along that profile you see that it shows in that 10 a total of around four almost five meters 15 foot of fall between those two points let's go back and turn on our layers here window window turn layers back on turn on our snapshot and we can kind of get this depiction very quickly um, what it was doing in your tin now I'm gonna point out I'm not how sure how good this tin is to tell you the truth um, but that's pretty flat out there so that makes it makes perfect sense that, but you need to know metadata in any class you need to know metadata I'll point out that in the bottom of the picture there'll be some metadata I'm not sure on the metadata with regard to the picture here it's the same as Google Earth I believe but uh, the, the tin is something you really have to learn to uh, notate where you got it and how good it is so that's six minutes uh, zooming around SketchUp 8 of course the yeah, no trip to SketchUp would be complete without then doing this it'll probably explode and I don't even have sketchy physics on here, on here so I won't do it um, you'll see that you can do the same thing here if you're going to do contour maps I'll go ahead and do that now I will go ahead and once again go back to my layers here and this time I'm not going to turn on the snapshot I'm going to go back here so I did something there I'm going to once again draw a box I don't know what happened to my box I guess because I put my box on turn that here turn layer back zero back on all right let me just turn and cut a contour map you know which SketchUp doesn't necessarily give you but you can go ahead then and do the same thing with contours on that tin well you're just cutting a plane you're going to that face you're holding the shift key now along that face and now as you start as they go to that point you can start to see how you can look at contouring and so by cutting once again here right clicking create a group from slice and then moving that up I'll just move this up three meters that's around 10 feet I'm moving it up three meters once again clicking on it if you don't think this is scary nutty you haven't seen scary nutty once again click I'm nudging it up three meters right click great group from slice I'll do it one last time once again if you're doing this as civil students or any one you really want to know where your datum was to start so I'm gonna go up three meters so I don't want to go down I want to go three I go down a little bit farther just arbitrary this time take that point there so let's say right click here create group from slice once again it would have been a great idea if I had been thinking about it to have my layering correct before I started but right away now you see on that you've got this JSIC idea of the contour map and boy that's looking awfully good to tell you the truth when I look at the contouring here and we'll try that uh, this may be getting that's on this site here that's an awfully good contour map um, in other words it aligns relatively well from what we see for the USGS maps I believe um, and so of course in this program what would be the point unless you could stand down here and look down to the valley I'm looking now I have to get this out of the way and I'm gonna put my eye height down here which I can't do at the moment so I'll say two meters even though I'm not two meters tall and I needed to say two meters above where I was so I'm gonna now walk down through walk down through the valley and you get the kind of sense of if you would especially those of you who are doing wind stuff I presume what you could do is you could then get some tree heights and you could populate this with building elevations and the like so incredibly incredibly powerful stuff thanks for listening thanks for the nudge 
I'm pushing all the software to what it can do for free. SketchUp 8, Sketchy Physics. Get them.